Leo. Hi. I can't change my background until you let me in. Until I let you in. You can't have like I have. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Hi. Hey. So you haven't loaded any of your own images yet? Well, no, I don't really like it. I mean, I, I know you like it, but it's not my thing. <laughs> it's, not my thing. it's creative. Well, it's kind of, but I find it more, you know. It's, distracting. It's distracting, but I guess if you have a background that. Uh, you, you look fine. I know, but it just, it's okay. It's, but I don't get like really excited about it. Like, oh my God, <laughs> all good. Your hat keeps going in and out of the stardust. I know, I know. The hats are probably the best. It's like you're disappearing, <laughs> disappearing, disappearing. <laughs> probably if I had my hair, hair down, maybe it would look. There you go. Ooh. Does it look better? <laughs> I haven't, I have an interview today, so I'm trying to look, you know, more refined, as some people like me. <laughs> uh, I think you could be wearing a sack of potatoes, and you look fine. <laughs> Hey, I had a very freaky nightmare the other night. Uh huh. I was listening to somebody talk and they were saying that they were gonna like take out these places. Like India was saying they're gonna take out Taiwan or whatever. They were talking about, you know, gonna implode these uh, places. And all of a sudden I'm realizing that I feel the building shake and the building's starting to like go down. I'm in this tall skyscraper and it's going down. And now I know that we're one of the places that they're demolishing, we're done. And I can feel this eminent of death. Like I panic for a second and then I'm like, we're dying. There's no way I'm surviving this. And I feel myself falling in this building, very large building. I know I'm in Calgary. And all I say is, I love you, Wendy. I love you, Wendy. I love you, Wendy. I was trying to send my sister a message. And then I'm waiting for the building to collapse and all the rubble to consume me and for me to die. And then it doesn't. I, it, nothing happens. And then I just wake up. Wow. <laughs> it, it was so, it was real. Like I was in that building. I, th I knew that we were dying. Like I knew I was dying. That was it. And then I didn't die, which was interesting. And then I woke up. It wasn't like I woke up just as I was falling. It was like I fell. I was waiting for the crumble. Uh huh. Nothing happened. And then I woke up. So what do you think it meant? <laughs> I think it, I think it means I, I have so many fears, you know, about that. It's just going to all not end well. And that's not true. It, it will end well. Like you just let go. It's going to be what it's going to be. It's just I have a hard time letting go of my structure, like of my house. It's really meaningful to me to keep a house. Like that's the hardest part about not making enough money is, you know, I could go get any job and just I'm be okay. But it's that I need a certain amount of money to keep the house is a totally different game. Right. But it's more about me like letting go that it's eminent that something might happen or might not happen. And you don't know when it's happening. And because buildings, I've had this before with Wendy, where I've been in a, the house has collapsed on me and Wendy's been watching me. So it's like, this is the second one where I'm in a, 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 like a place that has concrete in it. And the last place that that was, that was the Irvine where they it was on stilts. And I was in this house with stilts with Wendy that we were renovating. And then the corner collapsed. And I was, I was waiting, I was in the rubble and I was waiting, you know, is Wendy gonna come get me? Is she gonna come save me? So it was um, interesting that I thought of Wendy, you know, I know I'm dying and I'm like, I love you, Wendy. I love you, Wendy. <laughs> I thought of my mom, I'm like, ah, she's old, whatever. But my mom, uh, Wendy, I love you, I love you. <laughs> wow, so who does Wendy represent to you? Uh, Wendy's like my, she's like an angel, really. She, she just loves me. She loves people unconditionally for the most part, like in the sense of she's not one sided person, but she's just a lovely human being. Like she's always rooting for me. She's always like, Lisa, you're going to be okay. You've done this before. I can't believe you're not married. I can't some somebody you're so cool. Lisa, I just love you. La 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 la. Like she's, 
always problem solving. We're always sharing ideas. You know, we, we fight every once in a while, but it's about, she gets weird about something. And then I get mad that I'm not allowed to get weird about, I don't want to hear about her weirdness because it goes too far. Some of the conspiracy theories goes too far for me. So. <laughs> Because on the other side in the family, if you think about it, I've got Wendy's one side. I'm like the opposite. I believe that there's opportunity and not that I believe in good things and good people. I just believe that there's a creative way out of it. The universe is too cool for us just to have these bunch of fuckers running around doing shit to us. I, I don't know. That's just what I believe. So, and then Terry's like in the middle. <laughs> She's like, ah, fuck it all. You guys are all fucked. Whatever. People are, people are fucked and people suck and whatever. Who cares if the economy's going to collapse? Like Terry's just the opposite. Uh, so. Does she give, does she give, like, does she believe in the conspiracy theory type stuff or she just doesn't give a fuck about it? Terry? She doesn't believe in it at all. Oh, okay. No, she's always been very, let's just go to work. You do your thing. You know, meanwhile, she's suffering. She's suffering as a human being because she wants to connect deeply with people. And I realize that her boundaries that she sets with me is because she doesn't want to connect with people because she's just lost whatever she's lost. She's lost that sense of, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get hurt. So why bother? Or people aren't going to like me anyways. Or she's got this thing, I'm dumb. I'm stupid. I have nothing to say. I can't remember anything. And so she's actually now become like, I don't like people when really it's just all her fear of just not being good enough and not being lovable and just not showing up as her. If she just showed up as her and had fun, she'd be okay. That's a tough one to, 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 to speak to family. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but if they watch this video. <laughs> well, wait, like I said, Wendy went on, I talked to her on the phone. She called me and I thought, at first I thought she was gonna give me shit. She's like, Lisa, she says, what are you doing? What, what are you doing? And I said, what do you mean? Like, what, why? You didn't like the video? She goes, I loved it. You guys are awesome. She said, I, I've listened to thousands of videos, Lisa. She goes, you guys actually had something to say. She goes, it was really moving at times. And I just love Elijah's sound of his voice. She says, he's, I like him. And I, I said, you guys did a great job. You guys should be on somewhere. And I just started laughing. I said, oh, whew, okay, good. Well, I'm glad you liked it. I know, like, I think we're both in that situation of, if anyone is coming at me with anything like that, I need to talk to you. It's like, oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, I know. yeah the, the pattern. <laughs> what <did> I do? <laughs> What's your comment? What's your feedback? Yeah. So she loved it. She loved our show. Wow. Yeah. And she, you said she also saw my, my, uh, yeah, my advocation or. Yeah, she loved it. She said, what a nice thing for him to do. And it was, and I keep telling, I was telling Wendy that I do love your voice and I, I love your look. Like when you talk, yeah, it could, it could have been shortened. Yeah. Yeah. More concise and la la la. But maybe cause I know you, I like listening to your voice. You, you just have a, there's a resonance that you have and, and you know, where, do, how can we harness it more? I don't know, but you'd be awesome. Well, I, I think we're going to get there. I think, I mean, it's, I feel like, uh, like we've been building up this battery charge, like, and there's, there's this dam and we, what we've been doing is filling this large reservoir of water. And that's like all our practicing. And, you know, we, we must've done what, 30 of them, I think maybe at least 20 to 30 of them. Yeah. We did a good four. Do we get do four months? Do we get three months out of it? So 12, 13, 14. Yeah. We've had it done at least 14 of them. Oh, that's not quite. <laughs> no? Well, it seems, it seems like a lot, like, it seems like we're, we have a, an affinity now or a, we've done it enough that it's, it's, it's normal. Like it's, it's yeah. like, there isn't really, I mean, what would be different if there was a hundred thousand people listening? I mean, that would be very different, but um, I, <laughs> well, I, I not, it's hard to have people listen when you're not using marketing to let people know what you're up to. And if there's not an uh, agenda that people are searching for in YouTube. And like when he said, she couldn't find the video because of the, how you numbered it. Cause YouTube's really the second search engine in the world, the top set. So if it's not like Lisa and Elijah or um, relationships and, you know, yeah, you know, sets of the like theory for new paradigm, then nobody's really going to find us. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, we definitely have to, 
set it up. And I mean, am I, you know, I put, you know, at some point in the very secret plan website, I put all our videos, like I, I listed them all as yeah. embeds from that Facebook group, but they're all broken now. They all say it doesn't work. And when I went in to find the embed code, they don't have the embed code there. So I, I guess I, so they changed, they changed something in, in what happened. There's a way to download them though, because I've downloaded them before and put them on my YouTube. Okay. Like I just Googled, you know, how to download videos. It's kind of tricky, but somebody, it's just a couple quick moves, but it's yeah. how you do it. And then you, you save it and then you load it up on YouTube. It's just there as your video. Okay. Okay. Cause are they, are they hosted on StreamYard or are they hosted on Facebook? I'm not sure how it works. StreamYard is the vehicle and they get aired through the platform of Facebook, but then where does the video stay? I don't, I don't have a inbox on StreamYard where they're holding all the videos that we've done. I'm pretty sure. I think it's the channel. Oh, really? really? Okay. Because, so. okay. Well, that's, that's good to hear. I mean, if, if your sister likes it, I mean, she is your staunch advocate, but I mean, to me, that's, that's, if it was bad, she'd say it would be my guess. Yeah. 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 Well, she's, and you know, when he's not, I don't think she's really into what I'm into, but to have her, she, she went on and on about it. She kept telling me a couple, like, it wasn't just, Hey, that was cool. It was on and on and on. I'm like, oh, okay, great. Did you see the other ones? Some of them are really funny. <laughs> Did some funny shit on some of this. <laughs> well, I like the one where you started off with, uh, I just finished masturbating. I mean, that's, that's yeah. your, your openness around sex is. Uh... Well, you know what? Um, so when I used to work for Measurable Genius, what they did is they would take David Mailer's video. So David Mailer would be on Zoom talking to his guys. He does it like once or twice a week. He does these hour long Zoom calls with them. And all Measurable Genius did is they took the one video and found the, the shit they wanted to. And then they, you know, in the, put some B-roll in there and then just, you know, let it scroll down like you need to. And they made ads and they've done a ton of Facebook ads for him. And that's how he would grab people to go to his website to see, to sign up for his program, to watch his hour long, you know, video that he did on men. That's how they were doing it. Right. Right. But that you're spending money, you know, on editing, spending money on Facebook. And it's, I can't say it's the best, not interesting editing to me, but for what they liked, I guess it works for them. Well, maybe I could, uh, maybe I could do that. I mean, I know I just edited a piece for this. There's an old growth forest uh, last stand on Unify. That's going to happen tomorrow from 12 to three. And they're, they asked me for a piece. And I sent them a piece that I, I took a couple of days to edit and I'll send it to you. And it's, okay. it's like, it's got music. It's got the value card. Like it's, it's, it's a con it's me kind of a trying, like trying to edit something that, you know, is something. I mean, I've taken account the backgrounds. I'm taking account, putting music on. I took into account putting the value cards. So it's, it's kind of like combining, you know, it's, yeah. you'll, you'll see you'll see but it's but i think i could do the same with us in terms of i think i could pull out i mean maybe that's what i got to do i guess i gotta if i download all our episodes and then make a little reel yeah yeah well if you want people like to push them to your youtube channel that's your goal yeah. Push them to your YouTube channel where they start to, oh, oh, Elijah's got this, he's got that. Okay, I'll, I'll watch another one. And then they start watching them. Yeah. Well, I think watching a long feed on Facebook, nobody's doing it. Yeah. I think if they see clips, that's why Instagram's become more popular than Facebook. And also because they have those little reels that you can actually click on. And they're really only a minute, 30 seconds. And yeah. then you can subscribe to those people and then you just catch little snippets of them. But it's not this platform. Yeah, you know, I think the the TV on Instagram seems to be more popular. Mm. Well, I think also if we make a, a podcast of this, I mean, I'm doing a new paradigm toolkit podcast and I could pop it on there because I mean, we're talking for an hour, right? I mean, people, if yeah. they're going to listen, they're, they're usually going to do it while they're doing their dishes or they, you know, 
Yeah. They're not going to sit and watch us. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I always, I'm driving and listen to, because John Wyland, what they did, same thing with him, is instead of me watching an hour of John Wyland, is they literally just took five minute segments, like they cut up all his, his talk and then just threw it in a playlist on the John Wyland YouTube page. And then I can just hit a playlist and it'll just play little chunks so I can grab little chunks when I'm doing stuff. If I'm cleaning or something long-term, then I'll put on a, an hour long podcast. Uh, but other than that, it's just little bits, snippets. Uh, so how are you feeling? How are you doing? You look a bit better. Yeah, uh, I got, got some sleep last night. Um, I don't think I freaked out and then I got, you know, I did, I said to my sister yesterday, I know feng shui really well. I know it works. So there's no reason why I can't do, look for work, like put some feelers out and then get going and do some feng shui, like find out a cure that I could do that wouldn't cost me lots of money. So I did a couple of phones to my girlfriends and said, hey, I'm looking for work. Just let you know if you know anybody because that's how I'm going to find it. And then I went out to, I thought, no, I'm going to go to Ikea and cruise around. I'm looking for a mirror for my stove. And then I, because there's a cure where you double up your burners, which really is a wealth and money in feng shui. And I'm thinking, yeah, I could put a mirror behind my stove. That would that'd be okay. So I found a mirror that was kind of the same size. And as soon as I put it in there, I was like, fucking A. I was like, fuck, that looks good. Oh my God. I was like, you know, pulled the stove out, cleaned it all, washed all the walls, put it back in, made sure it didn't fall. I'm like, fuck, that's awesome. <laughs> I was like, and I did the cures, I put the cures in place, did all my stuff. And then I, I don't know, I did some other things. I can't remember, I did some other stuff. And then I got some emails and sure enough, this lady says, hey Lisa, I'm still serious about you representing us to, for this one client. Are you still interested in this job? I'm like, fuck yeah. I'm like, yeah, I am. And then I had a couple people out of the blue contact me that I haven't seen or talk to them in years. I'm like, hey, yeah, I'm still looking for some more contract work. Hey, what are you doing? You want to get together for lunch? Like I, it was, it was like, bam. Nice. The universe just went, okay, here's some shit happening. We don't know what that means. But, and then my friend, same thing. He texts me, says, Lisa, can I take you for a drink tomorrow? The patio is going to be nice and they're open. And I'm like, sure. <laughs> okay. Like, so that's sort of, I kind of was like, okay, good. Just secretly kind of inside going, okay, just humble, just quiet. But today I couldn't help it. I, I looked at my mirror on my stove. I'm like, it's cutting my head off. You can never have mirrors cut your head off and being tall, it's hard, right? Cause you're never, it's not good feng shui. So I literally get got in there and took down my uh, hood fan <laughs> and then I'm going to try and fix it so that it, it looks good and put some lights there. Cause I need lights on my cooking stove. And right. then I'm going to find a bigger mirror that covers the whole like if try, and if not, I'll get one made. Like I'm certain now if I have to spend some money getting a frame made and putting a mirror in it, no problem. Because this cure, this, how it looks, it even looks better. Like I was just like, fuck, this could be a whole new design thing. Putting fucking mirrors in behind stoves, <laughs> right? As a cure, because oh. they're always, your back's always to the people in your kitchen, which is just a no-no in feng shui. Oh. It sets your, when you're cooking, if you can't, don't have command of your space, it scares you and your chi. And that's how you cook with that energy of like never, your subconscious knows something's going on behind you. So there's like the stove is a big deal. Huh. Is send, it a me a picture, send, me, send me a picture after this. And, I, I will. Yeah. And you might want to. Totally different. Like I was. You, you might also put the picture up on Facebook and do a little blurb about what it means. Good idea. Good idea. I wish I would, I think I, I wish I would have taken a picture before I took the hood fan off. <laughs> but I think I'll, I can get my neighbor. She's going to help me. She might have some extra pieces because she just finished doing her kitchen in the same style as mine. Uh -huh. so I'll get her to hold it and I'll do a before and then an after because it looked awesome. It looks so good. I was like, bam, I got it. Well, that, I mean, that's like, you could have, I don't know if you've done this, but you might make a checklist of all of the little adjustments that, you know, you can make in terms of, uh, you know, you might do it by, I guess, the directions or do a, 
a nine diagram of the house, whatever it is. And I'm sure they already have them in Feng Shui books, but I'm just thinking about all of the things which you've seen over the years like that. And that could be like a, a $200 come into your house. I'll give you the checklist. We go through the whole checklist and we make yeah. 20 adjustments. And that's like, it costs, it's just an hour and it's just like a little, that's your entry. Well, it takes time because sometimes you don't know what people need. I, I find I can go in to anybody's house and make some adjustments, but I'd prefer it to be a little more spiritual than that. No, but you know, I'm saying more like it's sort of like the, the free fruit when you go into the, the, the big store. It's like I always thought like yeah. people need a, a two foot jump shot, something that's simple, easy, can be done in an hour, has very high value. And these aren't like the, the custom yeah. design things where you go in and you feel you're going look, you put a mirror here behind the stove, doesn't matter what mirror, what thing, it's going to work. And you're just coming in for that hour. Yeah. You're not looking, you're not like, right. then, like, let's say for 500 or something, you could have your uh, energetic assessment of the house and a one day, you know, I'm in your house and we do, we do it custom designed. But this is just the initial point. If you, if you just want to do a quick thing to see if it works, because you're saying you just adjusted one mirror behind the thing, just one thing. And all of a sudden you get like six phone calls. Yeah. I can see that didn't go over well. Okay. <laughs> well, no, because my, my feeling inside of that is I, I don't know what you mean. Like I, what I'm putting, I'm putting ads somewhere or I'm talking to people saying, Hey, let me come in your house and do some quick feng shui things. It's going to cost you $200 and I'll just quickly do something. And I, I just feel like that doesn't happen that way. That just doesn't happen. So I'm confused about how I'm, my brain's always going, well, how am I getting these people? How much is it going to cost? What am I really doing? Because you have to ha go get a mirror that size. I've taken three days to find this mirror. I've been in my mind thinking, well, maybe I'll put a mirror. What size is it? And I'm kind of going places and measure. Like, no, that's not the size. No, that's not the size. No, okay. No, it's, it's, you it's, know what I mean? No, I'd say first it would be, let's say a video where you go through the 20 items and then you say, I'll come into your house. I'll look at each item. And I'll give you, like, you're not saying, you know, you're not taking them to go get the mirror. You're saying you need the mirror and here's the store. Like in one hour, you give your knowledge in regards to these 20 things. You send out a video saying, you know, this is what you'll do. And maybe even, maybe it's three or 400 or something like that because you got to have travel time. But I'm just saying it's like a foot in the door of a quick boom to, of how Feng Shui can boost your life. But your real thing is, yeah. well, if you really want me to come in, it's going to cost you a thousand or two thousand or whatever. And this is what I do. It's, it's just that, you know, so some people, if they knew they could just do that thing, which you just said, you know, they'll try it out. This, this is, yeah, there's a caveat to that. Okay. I, I've been working on my spirituality for a very long time and feng shui People think that they move stuff and stuff happens. It's actually not that. That's a very small part of it. It's actually the person like me putting the cure in place with a mantra, a mudra, mind, body, speech that sets the cure in place. And that that's where the money is for me because people can do stuff and they'll, they'll feel better. Like their house will be cleaner. The door will feel better. They'll feel better. But if you don't have that spiritual -da, put that in place, it sort of doesn't get whammy and i'm also finding too is i need the envelopes i keep throwing away this knowledge without getting the nine envelopes you need nine red envelopes with a coin in each as a as a sign of respect for the the lineage that's been passed from person to person to person and so i'm i'm trying to find my own because i just i usually do that on people here oh you should do this with your front door it doesn't move very well and so I'm finding it, where do I honor what, the, what I know instead of just throwing it away like I do myself? You know, like I just throw, oh, sure, let's go out. Oh, sure, yeah, let's sleep together. Oh, sure, whatever. Like it's, it's like a throwaway. It's another throwaway. So I'm trying to find where do I sit with sharing information? Because people, you can share information, but if they want you to come to the house, you need to do the nine envelopes. Okay. So how do I do all that? I'm, because I did it again the other day. I walked into somebody's house. I'm like, hey, your front entrance needs to be fixed. Oh, what do you mean? I'm like, well, because you come in and you're split. 
She goes, well, they know to go that way. I said, I don't care. I didn't, I look right. And yeah, did I figure it out? Yes, but that's not the point. The point is you have to come in and without a doubt, know where to go. Yeah, you can figure it out, but the figuring out is the pause in the universe going, oh, nice living room. Oh, okay. It's none of their fucking business about your living room. They're going to get a dental hygienist cleaning, teeth cleaning. I said, put a sliding door, a barn, cool barn door and slide it over. Oh, I really like that. Okay, that'll be $500. Like, you know, but I, I do, I give it away all the time. Haven't, haven't we talked about this? Like, like, isn't this one of the major themes that... Yeah, it's not honor. When you don't honor... Like, you can give people suggestions, but if I kind of... You know, if they're not going to put the cure in place, I can't really do anything about it. It's just more of a design thing as well. But it's a feng shui. It's like how I see feng shui. It's, I wouldn't have given her that. She might have not ever thought of that. Well, isn't there a way of sort of, like, give a morsel but not give the whole uh, a banquet? Like Trying sort of like you, do you have a business card that has like feng shui expert on it at all? I, I haven't made, I just haven't printed any. I have rubber boot feng shui is my company name. And I have a Facebook page called rubber boot feng shui. I have rubber boot feng shui on my website. I just don't have my cards. Okay. I might suggest you do that. Yeah, I think so. I looked at it the other day. I'm thinking I should get those made into cards. Those are pretty cool. I mean, because right. Like it's sort of like, how do you position yourself and, and your you can be positioned in many ways you need like four or five business cards yeah. <clears throat> and and depending upon the the context of the situation you know it's uh you know it just doesn't make sense like it, it just to me there's just a couple of little adjustments now and you're going to be off to the races but it's it's like again we keep making that same like there's some self-sabotage pattern that is going no, we got you. Like the nemesis program with you. No, no, I'm not like, no. Well, it's the self-worth program. It's just, you give up a little, you know, hey, if you ever, I should have said, hey, I see you, you know, you're making your space into this. I said, if you ever want to do an exchange, because I, I need my teeth clean, you ever want me to do some, if you value feng shui, I'll, I'll do an exchange for you for cleaning, a couple cleanings, you know? Um. I see hydros here and they're changing the hydro meter and they're going to cut off the power for a few minutes. Oh, um, we're going to lose power for a few minutes. Okay. So we're going to lose the internet. Okay. But we're not sure. How about we keep going until it happens because okay. I, I have an 11 o'clock that I have to prepare for. So. Okay. Well, we can make, we can make this one. Okay. Why don't we just make it short whenever it ends, it ends. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's funny because she comes in with the phone and I've, call it it's like you can't but, but it's like that actually is the reason to stop the call because yeah. <laughs> i'm trying to tell you fucker <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah i mean that's that like i i i mean another thing is your energy your energy's shifted you're you're moving out of the the sorrow and um yeah i did shift the i did shift a little bit and I, there was a, a nice thing that John Wyland said yesterday with men that when women get hurt, they were talking about women that you fighting over stupid things like toast. Something happened in the morning at this couple about the toast. He burnt it and wasn't watching the toast. And, and then he made a comment and she said something. And then he got mad about the fucking toast and threw it in the garbage. Right. So it was this stupid argument. They said that they were having and He, he says, you know, guy, it's not about the toast. He's like, what do you mean? Goes, it's just not about the toast. It's that she felt dropped. You dropped her. You know, and he goes, so she's looking for you to tussle with her. He said, what do you mean? What does tussle mean? He says, it's kind of like you burn the toast and she gives you the look. And instead of you getting pissed off, you put the toast in your mouth. You're like, do you want some toast, honey? Do you want, do you want this toast? Do you want me to make, like whatever he was saying to tussle. Mm -hmm. that that's what women are mostly looking from our guys is this, we want to play with you, but we want it to be inside of your consciousness. So you create the container around this incident with toast and you're like, Oh, I'm going to, how am I going to dance with her? Am I going to say a joke? Am I going to shove it in my mouth? Am I going to be like, God damn it. And step up. Like, what are you going to do that? Be get her out of her mood or out of her whatever. And I, I just keep thinking how hard that is for men to play with us because they're used to being hammered down 
Um, and you, we know, you know that we're watching you with scrutinizing eyes and you feel it like there's something wrong I'm doing, it's not enough. And we also don't praise you enough. We also don't say, you're doing a fucking good job, Elijah. Like, look at how much shit you've gotten done. And you've all this work that you've done here and you've, you've been able to grow and keep growing and keep growing. Like, isn't, you're fucking doing an amazing job. Thanks for being on my side, blah, blah, blah. And so I'm seeing on both sides, it's hard for women to acknowledge men for all the cool shit you guys do, that you do specifically. And then it's hard for men on the other side to play with us because it's never been taught. Well, I, in my own situation, I find I reached a point where, and I think senses of humor has so much to do in terms of, because I find with Chinoa, as I think I've said to you, like whenever I'm off and I'm say, let's say I'm speaking about myself and I'm trying to, I'm trying to gain some praise and uh, I can notice in her eye and her grimace, how she disagrees with whatever I'm putting forward. And as soon as I see that, I start laughing because it's, 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 it's like this instantaneous feedback system of, of sort of like the constant self-assessment or the constant, let's say, assessment of the situation of the people. And we would love, you know, being in a situation where that other person just sees us for the great person we are and they're always complimenting us and, and they never really have a problem with all our mistakes, but it's, it's not that way, is it? Like, I mean, I make a lot of mistakes and there's a lot of things she's way better at. Oh. We have lost. <laughs>